right, uh, this next speaker, uh, whenever I spell her name, I always misspell it great. And there's really a reason for that. Uh, it's very rare that you meet a hero in this movement and they totally live up to all your expectations and more. Uh, Greta has been here through thick and thin with Skepticon. She's an amazing activist, ama an amazing writer. Uh, we're so happy to have her here. And so please give a very warm welcome to Greta Christina. I don't either. Is that it? Yes. Oh, yeah, we're on. All right. Hello. Oh, my gosh. I'm so happy to be here. <gasps> um, uh, so I'm going to just give you a brief warning. Um, I have a little bit of a cold, so if I'm raspy and sound like Darth Vader, then uh, my apologies. Uh, except for the part in the talk where I do that on purpose, but we'll get there. Um, <laughs> Uh, so hi, I'm Greta Christina. Um, I write the very imaginatively named Greta Christina's blog. Um, uh, I'm author of some books, Why Are You Atheists So Angry? 99 Things That Piss Off the Godless, that they have it here. Um, uh, I, I know, right? Um, I actually have a new book coming out in December. It's a mini book called uh, Comforting Thoughts About Death That Have Nothing to Do With God. Uh, that's coming out as ebook and audiobook in December. And I have a book out called Coming Out Atheist, How to Do It, How to Help Each Other, and Why. And that's what I'm talking about today. Um, so coming out is one of the most powerful acts that atheists can take, maybe the most powerful act. Uh, it's powerful personally, and it's powerful politically. Uh, coming out is how we make our own lives better. Overwhelmingly, atheists who have come out of the closet uh, say that they're happier now because of it, and they're glad they did it. Uh, coming out uh, makes life better for other atheists. Uh, it's how we let other atheists know uh, that they're not alone. It makes it easier for them to come out, um, and it's how we find each other. Uh, it's how we make communities. It's how we make a safe place to land uh, for other atheists who are leaving religion. Um, coming out is how we change the world's perceptions of us. It's how we push back against the myths and the bigotry and mis misconceptions that there are about us. Um, coming out is how we uh, refuse the social consent that religion relies on to perpetuate itself. And coming out is how we are going to forge ourselves into a political force to be reckoned with. I know, right? <laughs> and, and, and I think we can actually learn a huge lesson here from the LGBT movement. Uh, when LGBT people started coming out in large numbers, that is when we started to seriously change people's minds about us. Um, it's when we started creating a highly visible community so that other LGBT people knew that they weren't alone um, and knew that they had a safety net. Uh, it's when we started being a widely and positively recognized in popular culture. Um, and it's when we started becoming a really serious political powerhouse and started creating real social change. I mean, there is no way that same-sex marriage would be happening now and that all the other changes that we've made in the world would be happening now um, if it weren't for the last several decades of LGBT people coming out to the people in their lives. So coming out, yay, it's so awesome. Um, at, at the same time, Coming out as an atheist can also be difficult. Uh, it can have real emotional consequences, and it can also have practical consequences. So if we're going to encourage uh, ourselves and each other to come out and to cr create all this awesome social change that we're going to do by coming out, um, we need to do more than just keep saying, coming out, yay, it's awesome, let's all do it so much. Um, we need to offer specific strategies, very specific practical strategies and guidelines for atheists who want to come out. And we need to create and offer specific strategies for supporting each other in coming out and for creating a safe place to land for people who are coming out. Um, and that's what I'm going to be talking about today. Now, this is obviously a very large topic. It's why I have an entire book about it. Um, and I based that book on over 400 coming out atheist stories uh, that I read. Um, and it's got guidance on coming out to family, coming out to friends in the workplace, uh, coming out if you're a parent, if you're a student, if you're in the military, if you're in the clergy, uh, if you're in the conservative community, a progressive community, if you're a member of another marginalized group, and lots of other very specific circumstances. Um, and there's an entire section of the book about why coming out is important, and there's an entire section of the book about how to support each other 
and coming out. It is a very large topic. I can't possibly take on all of it today. Um, so today I'm just going to touch on a few of the most basic guidelines. Uh, I'm going to tell some of my favorite stories from the book. Um, and I am going to wind up with how we can help other atheists come out. So now that you've come to this talk on how to come out as an atheist, you know, you slept out to Skepticon, you, you know, wind up, wound up your dinner early so that you could get here to listen to this talk about how to come out, I have a confession to make. I can't tell you how to come out as an atheist. And I know some of you are feeling really ripped off right now. What can I tell you? I'm an atheist. I have no morality, right? I just lie all the time for no reason. <laughs> you know? um, so, so here's what I mean by that. Um, I can't tell you how to come out as an atheist in a way that's going to make it happen perfectly for every atheist every time. Uh, the reality is that coming out atheist can be difficult. It isn't always, and I'll get to that in a bit, uh, but it can be. And there's nothing that I can say or do that's going to make that not be true. Um, you know, that was actually one of the difficult things when I was researching the book. I really wanted to, to be the, to, I was going to write the magic wand, the magic bullet that was going to make it perfect, and, and it, there's just no way that's going to happen. And it's also true that coming out atheist is different for everybody. I mean, again, when I was first researching the book and first starting to write it, I kind of imagined it as just this very clear set of directions. You do this, you do this, you do this, and then you're out of the closet. You know, you do, you know, if A happens, then do B. You know, if your grandmother starts to cry, then turn left on Main Street, you know, like directions on your phone. Um, but then when I started really getting into the research, it became very clear that our experiences are just much too different for anything that systematic to work. Um, so I had to rethink how I was framing it. And I was like, OK, this book is not a set of directions. The book is a map. It is a map of the territory with some ideas on how you can pick the path that's going to work best for you. I can't tell you the right way to come out. There is no right way to come out. That being said, there are a few guidelines that seem to apply to most people who are coming out as atheists. Um, so I want to talk about those first. Um, again, I don't have time to get into all of these basics. Um, it's just a few high points, and I'm just going to touch on each one briefly. Number one, coming out is a spectrum, and it's a process. You know, we often talk about coming out as if it was this either or thing. Either you're behind that closet door, or you're outside on the other side of the closet door. Um, but that's really not the way it is. It's not this single step that you take once and then you're done with. It is an ongoing process. Coming out is a series of decisions that you make every day. I mean, for one thing, each time you come out to a different person, it's a different coming out moment. Also, with some people, you may have to come out more than once. Um, if they don't believe you or they don't accept it, if they're like, oh, it's a phase, honey, you'll get over it. You'll come back to the loving arms of Jesus or whoever. Um, and even after that's all behind you, even if after you've come out to all the central people in your life and they've all basically accepted it, it's still, coming out is still an ongoing series of choices that we make every day. You know, do you chat about your atheism at the basketball game? You don't worry whether the people sitting in the row behind you can hear you. Um, do you uh, wear an atheist t-shirt to the airport? Um, do you cross in God we trust off the money? Um, and, and if you do, do you do it right there in front of the store clerk where they can see you, or do you wait till you're home? Um, if somebody asks you, what church do you belong to? Do you say something kind of vague, like, oh, I'm, I'm not, you know, it's, I haven't decided yet? Or do you say something a little more specific, like, oh, I, I'm not really religious? Or do you just flatly say, I don't go to church, I'm an atheist? So being an out atheist, it's not an either or thing, it's a continuum. And we all get to decide where we want to be on that continuum. I mean, I, for instance, I am a, about as out an atheist as you can be. I have a blog. It's called Greta Christina's blog. It's got my name on it. It says atheism at the top. I have books with my name on it. It's got the word atheist. But I don't always chat about my atheism with people at the airport. You know, I don't I'm kind of an introvert, and I don't necessarily want to have that conversation for five hours on the airplane. Um, some people do. Some people love to do that. And, and mazel tov, that's awesome for them. I don't want to do that. And I'm not going to beat myself up over that. I'm comfortable being about here on the spectrum and not all the way over here. And we all get to decide where we want to be. OK, so number two, give the people you're coming out to some credit. 
when I first started researching this book, I had expected to be reading a deluge of tragedies. It's like I was collecting these hundreds of coming out stories, and I pretty much did it with a bottle of whiskey at the desk, going, oh my god, this is going to be horrible. It's going to be so sad. It's going to be, you know, the story after story of shattered families and ruptured marriages and broken friendships and ruined careers. And, and I did read those stories. I read too many of them. I mean, obviously, any is too many. And I did read those stories. But what surprised me is I didn't read that many of them. Most of the stories, most of the coming out atheist stories that I read actually pretty much turned out OK. The, the really devastatingly sad stories were the exception. Most of the atheists who have come out are, are pretty much on good terms with their families. You know, they've mostly kept most of their friends. They mostly get along with their coworkers. Um, now, sometimes it took time. Uh, sometimes they went through fights and, and tears and difficult conversations. But as a rule, it eventually works out OK. And a lot of the time, it didn't involve fights or tears, or didn't involve as many fights as we thought it was going to. Going to. And it didn't take as long as people were afraid it was going to. Um, so I want to inject a couple of stories here from the book. Um, here's what Midori says. Over the past few months, I've come out to my brother and his wife as queer, trans, and atheist. It seems like I'm always coming out as something. Um, <laughs> Their reaction is usually something along the lines of, we love you and support you no matter what. And if you need anything, just let us know. They're awesome like that. Um, in her interview for the Ebony Exodus Project, Why Some Black Women Are Walking Out on Religion and Others Should Too, by Candace Gorham, by the way, that is an extraordinary book and everybody should read it. Um, in her interview for the Ebony Exodus Project, Janet says, when I told my grandmother that I didn't believe, she said she loved me no matter what. Uh, and Bubba707, I love quoting people from the internet. Um, <laughs> Bubba707, um, who lives in a conservative, mostly Catholic, small town in, in Wisconsin, says it's just not a real subject of conversation. Uh, the closest to it was a while after my dad's funeral, an aunt asked if I was religious at all, and I told her no, not at all. Nothing more was said, and we still get along fine. So give the people who care about you some credit. Don't assume that their religion will trump their relationship with you. Sometimes it will. Sometimes that does happen, and you should be prepared for that. Most of the time, it won't. Number three, in general, sooner is better. If it's at all possible, it is generally better to come out sooner rather than later. Uh, for one thing, and very importantly, the sooner you come out, uh, the more likely it is that you will be able to pick the time and place. Uh, the less likely it is that somebody else will out you, uh, either maliciously or out of a you know, misguided concern for your non-existent soul, or, or, or just accidentally, because they didn't know you weren't out, and they made a joke about it to your grandma. There's a story about that in the book. It's like my friend made a joke about my atheism to my grandma. He didn't know I wasn't out to her. Um, also, people sometimes out themselves. Uh, there's stories in the book about, you know, how, here's how I came out. I hit reply all on the email. <laughs> um, and, and there's lots of stories about Facebook outed me. They changed their freaking privacy settings again. And, you know, I thought I was just posting to a few people. I was posting to my whole list. The sooner you come out, the less likely it is that something like that's going to happen. Um, also, uh, the less likely it is that somebody's going to force the issue and really not let you dodge it, um, or that a crisis is going to make it necessary for you to come out right away, even if it's really lousy timing. Um, and if you come out sooner, people will have more time to get comfortable with the idea, and that means that you will have more time with them to have a really open, honest relationship. I mean, we're atheists, right? We know that our time here is limited. The sooner you come out, the more of that limited time you're going to have with the people you care about to really have an authentic relationship with them. Now, there are some very obvious exceptions to this guideline. If you're in a situation where coming out atheist could really seriously screw up your life, you know, for instance, if you're a student and you're dependent on your family, um, and they might cut off support, they might cut off tuition, they might kick you out of the house, they might really cut you off, then yes, absolutely hold off for now. If you're in a situation like that, th wait. But in general, if you can do it safely, sooner is better. Number four, have patience and be the bigger person. 
So I said earlier that coming out is a process. It's not just a process for you. It's also a process for the people that you're coming out to. Uh, it can take time for people to get used to it. Um, one of the most important lessons about coming out as an atheist and one of the most difficult is patience. Now, people who are familiar with my writing may now be wondering, who are you and what have you done with Greta? Um, I am not normally a big advocate for patience. Um, but here's the difference. As atheist activists and in our public life, I absolutely think it's fine to demand justice and acceptance right now. Um, in fact, I think it's more than fine. I think that it is essential. I think that speaking up is how we're going to get justice and acceptance. If we wait until people accept us before we start speaking up and fighting for our rights to be accepted, we're going to wait a really long time. But in your personal life and with the people that you care about, the people that, you're with it, that you really want to be in it with for the long haul, you probably want to you know, plan to be in it with them for the long haul. I mean, you don't have to be a doormat, and I'm going to get to that in a second, but you need to understand that this process often takes time. Um, and sometimes you're going to need to be the bigger person. Uh, when you come out as an atheist, uh, people will sometimes be, is there a delicate way to put this? No, there's no delicate way to put this. Sometimes people will be total fucking assholes. Um, uh, sometimes people will be bigoted. They can be manipulative. They can be guilt tripping. They can be cruel. It's not going to help if you're an asshole back. Um, you know, if these are people that you want relationships with, and they might not be, in which case, you know, you get to make your own decision about whether you want to be an asshole. But if these are people that you want relationships with, you're going to need to be the bigger person. Um, you need to remember that these are people you want in your life. Keep your eye on the big picture. Remember, OK, they're being a really horrible now, but mostly they're not like that. And mostly I want this person in my life. And just keep your eye on that big picture and, and try to rise above it. On the other hand, it is very much a very good idea to, number five, decide how much crap you're willing to take. Now, the reality is that you're probably going to deal with at least some anti-atheist bigotry and hostility. And you know what? That's true whether you come out or not. You know, you're going to be dealing with that hostility and bigotry whether you come out or keep your mouth shut about it. But when you come out, you get to decide how to respond to it. You know, you get to decide where to draw the line and you get to decide how to draw the line, in what tone and manner to draw the line. You know, you get to decide when to just let it slide. I don't feel like having that conversation right now. I'm tired. Um, and when to kind of gently say, hey, you know what? I'm an atheist. And those things you're saying about atheists, that's, that's not true or fair. And when to just bluntly say, screw you. I'm an atheist. And what you're saying is bigoted bullshit. Knock it off. Um, and you get to decide who you're willing to be patient with and who you're not. Um, now, here's a story from the book that I think is a really good example of how to do this, of how to draw these boundaries. Uh, when Terry Garrett came out as atheist to her fundamentalist family, uh, she had some very upsetting conversations with them, and she eventually had to set some firm limits. Uh, the most important rule, she says, was to insist upon a calm and fair discussion place. Uh, this means that I refused to allow tempers in the conversation. The instant that siblings would start to flip their shit, I'd say, I love you too much to have this conversation in anger. And I would physically leave the room, effectively enforcing my no yelling rule. Uh, she then goes on to say, I also learned, after being far too patient with siblings, to stop allowing it to be a one-way conversation. If they insist that I read a certain book or watch a DVD, I would only agree if they would be willing to watch one of mine. Uh, if they pushed me to answer a series of questions, I'd be fine with that, uh, as long as I was free to ask them questions in return. This little aspect I should have instituted from the start. It would have saved me rereading a lot of circular crap by C.S. Lewis. <laughs> so there's a difference between being patient and being a doormat. You may have to be patient with ignorance. You may have to give people time to change their minds about us and to learn about us. But you don't have to put up with insults, hatred, bigotry, or abuse. You can be the bigger person, person and you can be patient while still expecting fairness, not apologizing, and drawing clear boundaries about what you're willing to deal with. Okay, 
So number six, have your practical and financial ducks in a row within reason. Now, as positive as coming out generally is, and as much as most atheists who have come out say that they think it was the right decision, the reality is that it can create real practical problems. It doesn't always, and sometimes we have an expectation that it's going to cause these terrible practical problems, we're going to lose our job and get kicked out of our house and so on. And it doesn't happen as often as we fear it's going to, but it does happen, and that's something to be prepared for. Um, so have your practical and financial ducks in a row first, as much as you can. Uh, if you're coming out atheist at work and you think it might endanger your job, you know, make sure that you could cope with that financially. Have your resume in order. Uh, put out some feelers for other jobs. You know, if you can, save up a couple months' salary before you do this, before you come out. Um, if you're in a conservative religious community um, and you think that coming out might isolate you, uh, find an atheist community first and, and put down roots in it. Um, if you're a student and your parents are supporting you, you know, you might wait to come out to them until you're out of school and you're on your own. Now, there are some obvious limits to this advice. Coming out means accepting some risk. I mean, if you wait to come out until everything is perfectly safe, if you wait till every single duck is in a row and you can just go bang, 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 there go all the ducks. I think I'm extending this metaphor too much. Um, <laughs> If you wait until everything is perfectly safe, you're going to wait a really long time. You're probably going to wait forever. But it's really important to remember that staying in the closet has risks as well. I mean, for one thing, the longer you wait to come out, the greater your chance is of being outed, you know, by other people, by yourself accidentally, by Facebook. Um, and it is much, much better to come out voluntarily uh, than it is to be outed by somebody else. Um, and what's more, staying in the closet doesn't just involve the risk of being outed. It involves the risk of not being outed. It involves the risk of being in the closet. The reality is that living in the closet is stressful. And it causes real damage. It causes real emotional and psychological damage. Um, it, it, there's the stress of keeping important secrets from the people that you care about. Um, it involves the stress of having to keep track of who knows which secrets about you and, you know, oh, am I telling this person and what if they tell somebody else and how might, might I get hurt if the word gets out? Um, it involves the stress of having to keep your mouth shut when people say bigoted things about atheists. You know, when we are closeted and people say bigoted things about atheists, we just have to listen and we have to take it in. Whereas if we come out, we can put the responsibility for that bigotry back out onto the people who are spewing it. Um, being closeted is stressful and it does real damage. There's a ton of research about this on LGBT people, um, that cl being closeted does real emotional damage. There's less research on it about atheists, but there has been some done and it says the same thing. Being closeted does damage, being out is, even if it was difficult, it's psychologically less stressful. And it's really important to remember that when you're doing your cost-benefit analysis of coming out versus staying in, neither choice is risk-free. Both choices have, have, have risks to them. You know, being closeted is not safe either. So if you're thinking, I can't come out, it's not safe, being just remember, neither choice has, is risk-free. And number seven, seven. Remember that it's not always that big a deal. I mean, so far I've mostly been talking about the difficulties. I've been talking about, the, you know, of course, there's problems. We want to solve them, right? Um, but there's a flip side that is really important to remember, and that is that sometimes coming out is not as traumatic as we fear it's going to be. Um, I cannot tell you how many coming out stories I, I read when I was researching this book that ended with, it really wasn't that bad. I mean, there's this thing that a writer should never, ever say, but I'm going to say it. People sometimes ask, what are your favorite stories from the book? And of course, I have some one, there's wonderful stories, there's really dramatic stories, there's really touching stories. Some of my favorite stories from the books are the really short, boring ones. They're the ones where it's like, I came out to my mom and she said, that's fine with me. End of story. I mean, there's not much of a big narrative arc there. But those are some of my favorite stories from the book because it often does go that way. It's not as bad as we fear. Also, sometimes the reaction is more kind of in the middle. You know, it's like, oh no, they didn't love it, but they got over it. They, they got over it sooner than I thought they would. You know, we had some difficult conversations at first. My mom cried when I first told her, but now it's fine. 
Um, and in fact, in the hundreds, in the over 400 coming out atheist stories that I read for researching this book, literally one person said they regretted it. One person. And sometimes when atheists come out, the reaction is, me too. I have heard this story from so many atheists, I cannot even tell you. They tell the people in their life that they're an atheist, they have their heart in their mouth, oh my god, what are they going to say, what are they going to say? And what the person says is, oh my gosh, me too. I had my heart in my mouth, I couldn't tell you, I was afraid to tell you, oh my gosh. Let's spend the next five hours talking about why there is no God. Um, um, <laughs> Um, and in fact, I want to do a, a show of hands here. I want to, if we can get the lights up for just a second. Um, uh, I want to do a show of hands. How many people have had that happen to you? Have you, how many people have come out as an atheist, had somebody, family, friend, barista, at the coffee shop, whatever, um, say me too. So get your hands up and everybody look around. This is not a trivial number. This is a lot of people. This is, it looks like maybe a third of the people. And every time I give this talk, it's the same thing. This is a really common experience. Coming out is how we find each other. Now, you know the people you're coming out to better than I do. Uh, you know better than I do whether it's likely to be a difficult conversation or, more, or an easy one. I'm just saying, don't go into the conversation with this giant thundercloud over your head. Don't go in expecting doom with the Darth Vader music, you know, bum, 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 mom and dad, I'm an atheist. I mean, unless you think it would be funny. Um, in which case, go for it. Um, but, but don't go in expecting doom. They may react better than you think. OK, so I want to shift gears now. Um, I've mostly been talking about how we ourselves can come out. And I want to look at a different question, which is how can we support each other in coming out? Um, for those of us who are mostly out already, who have been listening to this talk and going, yeah, 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 but I'm the guy, I'm the woman with the bumper stickers and the t-shirts and, you know, it's like somebody says, what's your name? I say, I'm and I don't believe in God. Um, <laughs> um, for those of us who are mostly out already, um, how can we help other people get there? Um, and how do we make atheism a safer place to come out into? Um, again, this is a large topic. Uh, the book has an entire section about it. I'm just going to touch on a few high points. The number one thing we can do to help atheists come out is to come out ourselves. That is absolutely the number one thing you can do. Um, and in fact, you know, people sometimes say, I don't have time to be an activist. I really want to give something back to the atheist movement. I don't have time. I don't have energy. I don't have money. What can I give? Seriously, if the only thing you do as an atheist is to come out of the closet to more people as safely as you can, to as many people as you feel you safely can, that is huge. That's probably the number one thing you can do. Uh, that and giving money to Skepticon. Um, <laughs> um, but really, the number one thing we can do to help other atheists come out is to come out ourselves. When we come out, other atheists feel safer coming out because they know they're not alone. You know, they know they'll have a safety net. And then they make the next wave of people feel safer. And they make the next wave feel safer. I mean, it's actually one of the best things about coming out atheist. It has this snowball effect. Um, and there's this way I've been thinking about it lately, which is if you come out as an atheist tomorrow, five years from now, there's going to be some atheist in Boise who you've never met and will never meet who's coming out because of you. Because you, your coming out made it easier for some other atheist to come out. And they made it easier for some other atheist to come out. And they made it easier for somebody else. And in five years, there's an atheist in Boise, in Tampa, in Albuquerque, in Rhode Island, in Atlanta, all over the country, all over the world. There are people who are coming out, at least partly, because you did it and you got that ripple effect going. Forming communities is absolutely one of the most important things that we can do to help people come out. Um, the reasons people stay in religion often have very little to do with religion. When you, people do polls asking believers, why do you go to the particular church or temple or synagogue or mosque or coven or you know, whatever they go to, um, they, very, they rarely say that it's about theology. You know, they usually say it's community. You know, it's like they get social support, they get practical support. Um, and so we need to create communities that provide what religious communities provide. Um, safety nets, uh, guidance and counseling, um, places for rituals and rites of passage, daycare, uh, education, job counseling, 
um, activities for families, uh, avenues for charity work, avenues for social justice work, um, companionship, continuity. Um, if we're asking atheists to come out, uh, we need to give them a safe place to land. And a lot of us are doing this, and mazel tov, you know, really. This is actually, I've been doing this public speaking thing for about five years, and there's been this blossoming of atheist communities on the ground in the last five years that did, did just five, it's like right now, as far as I can tell, there's an atheist community in pretty much every big city in this country. A lot of cities have more than one, and there's a lot of atheist communities in smaller cities and smaller towns as well. That wasn't true five years ago, so mazel tov, my hat is off to the people who, if I had a hat, it would be off, uh, to the people who are doing this work. Let's keep doing it, let's do it better, and let's do it more. It's hugely important. Um, it's also important to remember that coming out is easier for some people than it is for others. And so when we're encouraging each other to come out, uh, we need to make sure that it doesn't, that encouragement doesn't turn into judgment, uh, that it doesn't turn into pressure, that doesn't turn into guilt tripping, that doesn't turn into competition, you know, about, oh yeah, I've been out since I was 15. You know, also, also if you make it a competition, you're gonna lose, um, uh, because there's people in the book who came out at age six, and so unless you came out as an atheist at age five, you lose, don't make it a competition. Um, um, and also, just more importantly, more seriously, coming out is different for everybody. Different people have different circumstances in their lives that make it easier or harder to come out. And different people also just have different personalities. Um, and we have to support people in doing it on their own timetable and in their own way. Um, and speaking of differences between us, um, I have a huge amount to say about diversity in the atheist community. Um, racial diversity, uh, gender diversity, uh, diversity of economic class, educational backgrounds, and lots more. Um, it is a hugely important topic. I would actually argue that it may be the most important topic our community is facing right now. It is also a very large topic. Um, and I don't have time to do it justice today. I have an entire other talk that I give about diversity. I promise I'm not doing that. I'm not giving an entire other 45 minute talk, shoehorned it into the middle of this one. Um, this is the two minute drill on diversity. If we care about broadening our horizons, um, if we care about making organized atheism more welcoming to more people and to a wider variety of people uh, than are already participating in it, we have to take conscious, deliberate action to make that happen. It is not gonna happen on its own. A lack of diversity in a community is a self-perpetuating cycle. We all have unconscious biases that keep these cycles going. And that doesn't make us bad people. This is universal to all of us. If somebody says, hey, you know that thing you said that was kind of racist, that thing you did that was kind of sexist, they're not saying you're a terrible, terrible person. This is universal. We all have these biases. It doesn't mean we're bad people. What it does mean is we have responsibility to be more aware of the biases. And it means that we have the responsibility to take conscious action to intervene in them. And if we want to succeed in making atheism more welcoming to more people, uh, we need to be willing to take a hard look at how exactly we're failing to make that happen. Uh, we need to be willing to listen and really listen, the part of listening where you stop talking for a few minutes. Um, really listen uh, when people talk with us about these issues and not assume that because we are all so smart and skeptic-y, therefore we know all the things that there are to be known about this. Uh, we need to be willing to keep looking at what we could do better and not let ourselves get complacent because we have good intentions and have done good things in the past. When we fail to do it right and people call us on it, uh, we need to not make our hurt feelings over being called on it a more important issue than the fact that we screwed up in the first place. Um, trust me, you know, your hurt feelings over being called you know, being, somebody saying you did something racist is way less important than the racist thing that you did. <laughs> uh, way, way, way less important. Um, and we need to be willing to change how we do things, uh, sometimes in ways that are inconvenient or uncomfortable or difficult. Finally, okay, not finally, big lie again. Atheist, no moral compass. Um, uh, um, uh, finally for today, <laughs> um, 
Uh, there's one more hugely important thing that we can do to support each other in coming out. We can tell happy stories about coming out. You know, when atheists tell, talk about coming out, it's really easy to focus on how difficult it is. There's a reason why when I was starting to do, when I was starting to do my research and sitting down to read the 400 coming out stories, I was doing it with a bottle of whiskey on the table. I was like, oh my God, this is going to be so, because every coming out story anybody's ever told me has been sad. And it's totally understandable. You know, of course, we have sad stories to tell, we have tragic stories to tell, we have painful stories to tell, and we should absolutely tell them. You know, of course, we want to vent and to commiserate with people who will understand us, who aren't going to trivialize us or gaslight us about it. Um, and of course, we want to problem solve. You know, we want to tell our sad stories so that we can figure out how other people can do it better. It's hugely important. It's hugely valuable. valuable. I would never tell anybody not to do it. But it's only one side of the story. And I think that you know, if we want to help other atheists come out, I think we need to tell the other side of the story as well. Living an out life is fun. Being out makes you feel liberated. Being out makes you feel comfortable in your own skin. Being out, it makes it easier to find other people you connect, who you connect with and people who you really genuinely share, share values with. You know, an honest life, a life where you're not constantly keeping track of who knows which secrets about you and worrying about how you might get hurt if the secret gets out, that feels good. It's easier to relax and to be yourself and to have fun. We can tell happy stories about coming out. So I want to finish up here with just a few more quotes from the book, um, quotes that really get this point across. Flora, whose family are intensely conservative Christians in Texas, says, I'm extremely happy that I did come out to my family. I feel much more honest and open because of it, like our relationships are built on mutual love and trust instead of on fear or lies. Eric Paulson came out at age 10 when he asked his parents to stop sending him to church. When they agreed to his request, uh, he says, I can't tell you how much better I felt once I knew I was no longer going to be forced to participate in this weekly farce. It was truly as if I had been washed clean. I know, right? Are you washed in the blood of the non-existent lamb? <laughs> um, Blaine says of coming out to his parents, they were both more than accepting and didn't seem to care one bit. Um, in her interview for the Ebony Exodus Project, again, by the book, awesome, um, Mendisa says, I've had some of my high school peers actually thank me for saying the things that I do say because they've, they felt the same way. And finally, Daniel Shaler, uh, the anonymous atheism ship has sailed for me and I'm happier for it. And I'll say one more time before I close, in the hundreds of coming out stories that I've read and heard, Literally one person said they regretted it. Everybody else said that even if they had a hard time at first, even if they had continued to have a hard time, even if they did alienate family or friends, they're still glad that they came out and they still think it was the right decision. People sometimes have regrets about how they came out, about when they came out, about what order, who they came out to in what order. You know, it's like people have regrets about, you know, I really, I wish I hadn't told my gossipy cousin first because he told the whole family. I wish I hadn't done it at Christmas Eve dinner. <laughs> um, but mostly people, overwhelmingly, people say that having come out as an atheist has made their lives better and they're happier now because of it. Coming out atheist can be hard, it can be upsetting, it can sometimes be dangerous, it can sometimes be really freaking annoying, um, it can take time and it can take work, but it can also be awesome. It can be the door to a better life. And if we want to support each other in coming out, one of the best things that we can do is to get that message out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Nice. Thank you. So I think we have time. I know we're not really 
set up for a Q and A, but we have time for like I think maybe two or three questions. So um, just pop pop your hand up if you have any questions. Hmm? Question. So the question is about coming out in the workplace and how frequently do you see retaliation from employers? Less than I thought, honestly. Um, you know, I, that was one of the things I was really bracing myself for. It does sometimes happen. People do lose their jobs over, because they came out as an atheist. Um, it's not legal to do that, but surprise, surprise, sometimes people break the law. Um, and if you're going to file a workplace discrimination suit, um, uh, you have to have really good proof. Um, but it, and sometimes there can be more subtle forms of workplace discrimination. You know, you don't get the promotion, or people are just douches. Um, but um, but it actually happens less than than I expected. I was expecting a lot of those stories. There is a whole chapter in the book about coming out in the workplace, and it's got a lot of very specific strategies. You know, things like you know, we're I was talking about getting your ducks in a row first. One of the best things you can do if you think you're going to have a hard time in the workplace is to document your work situation as much as you can. So that if you've been getting good feedback and good reviews, and then all of a sudden you come out as an atheist and you get canned or you start getting bad reviews, um, then you've got some ammunition. Um, and there's a lot of other specific pointers about it. But, um, but yeah, it actually surprised me. It does happen, but it happens less often uh, than, uh, than, I, than I thought it would. Uh, any other questions? Uh, Anthony, I was hoping you would ask a question because you always have like the best questions. Okay, so um, my question is in regards. Um, so the question is, are there resources for people, especially for young people and you know kids, minors, uh, who are outed against their will, and especially if they uh, have a very hard time with their family? Um, there are a lot of. I don't know if there that specific form of support exists. To my best of knowledge, it doesn't. There is a secular safe zone project that's uh, starting to happen. Uh, there's, you know, in schools and other places, so that um, atheist kids, kids and teenagers, uh, know that they have a safe place to go. Um, it's, it's and it's modeling itself on the uh, safe zone, uh, LGBT safe zone uh, projects that exist in a lot of schools. Um, as far as I know, we don't have anything like shelters. Um, you know, and that's something that we probably need to step up our game on. Um, you know, because you know the reality is, I, there's not a ton of stories of atheists being kicked out of their like really being kicked out of their home when they're minors, um, but it does occasionally happen. Um, it doesn't seem to happen as much as it happens with LGBT students, but um, but it does it does happen. Um, um, and as far as I know, there aren't like there's not like shelters and that kind of thing, uh, but there is a huge amount of other kinds of support available. Um, you know, they, um, you know, uh, there's actually this whole resource guide in the back of the book in the back of Coming Out Atheist uh, that has a lot, lots of resources available uh, to the Secular Therapist Project. Um, if you know you're coming out atheist and you know, you're having a hard time with your family and you need somebody to talk to. Um, or recovering from religion. If you don't need a therapist necessarily, you just need a support, a support system. Um, uh, their support does exist. I don't think that particular form of support in, you know, in, uh, like shelters if you lose your home. I, I don't think that exists now and that's probably a good idea. Um, if I'm wrong about that, by the way, somebody should let me know. But um, other questions? Anybody? Uh, yes. Um, so the question is uh, has to do with the impact of coming out on the people that we come out to, um, and you know it's like when we come out to our friends, to our family, um, you know, does does it hurt them? Um, here's the thing: I kind of and I see your point, but that's putting the responsibility for bigotry on us. And the responsibility for anti-atheist bigotry is not on us. The uh, responsibility for anti-atheist bigotry is on people who are bigoted against atheists. And what I would say is that for people that you're really close to, you know, for people, you know, friends, family, people that you're really close to, most of the time, even if coming out atheist upsets them, even if it hurts them, what they mostly want is an authentic relationship with you. What they mostly want is to be in a relationship with you. And if you're not out, you're not giving them that. If you're not out, you're not really giving them yourself. Um, and being honest about things, even though they're difficult, that's kind of essential 
to, to real authentic relationships. Um, and again, again, most atheists who have come out, one of the methods, in fact, one of the ways of smoothing things over, um, if the family or friends has a hard time with it, is you can say, look, I get this is hard for you, but it was really important to me that I be honest with you. It was really important to me that I, that I be truthful. I didn't want to lie to you about something that was so important. So that can be a way to sort of ameliorate that, um, you know, a way to, but, but the thing is, again, you know, ask, you know, again, I would say ask any LGBT person, you know, are the people in your life mostly, would they rather know? And even if they were like, okay, well, I don't want to talk to you because you're LGBT anymore because you're LGBT and I'm not comfortable with that, is that somebody you want to have a relationship with? You know, and sometimes it is. Sometimes it is. It's your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister. Sometimes it is. But often it isn't. Um, and, um, and again, I don't think we need to take responsibility for that. If we live in secrecy and shame because being who we are might upset somebody, that is way too high a, a price to pay. Now again, you get to make that cost-benefit analysis yourself for each of your relationships. And there's a lot of people who are like, I'm out to everybody except grandma. Because grandma's 95, she doesn't have this long to, to go, it would just be a hard conversation, it's not worth it. And you get to make that decision for yourself. You get to decide for yourself, some relationships are, you know, it's like, it's, I'd rather keep the peace than, um, but most of the time, I think that, um, you know, for one thing, there's the whole thing about what if grandma finds out secondhand? That hurts more. And that is something that a lot of atheists have said, is that if they kept it a secret and then they found out because I told my gossipy cousin and they told grandma, that's worse. And that hurts worse. And so I think that that's something, again, when you're doing that cost benefit analysis, even if it hurts people, to be honest, it hurts people more if you're not honest and then they find out some other way. So I think we have time for probably one more question. Anybody? Uh, yes. Uh, so the question is about using words other than atheist, uh, using euphemisms or softer words. There's actually an entire chapter in the book about language. Um, the TLDR of that chapter is, I, don't I really don't care what word you use. I, I, I am so sick of the, we all have to call ourselves atheists. No, we all have to call ourselves humanists. No, we all have to call ourselves skeptic. Um, and in fact, this is a lesson we can learn from the history of the LGBT community. You know, we, the power to name ourselves, especially when we've been marginalized and other people have been identifying us and saying this is who you are, the power to name ourselves is hugely important. And we shouldn't be trying to take it away from each other. What I will say is if you're going to use softer language, you're going to need to spell out what you mean. Um, there's a lot of stories in the book of people who thought they came out. <laughs> um, there's one, of, one of my very favorites is uh, this woman who, she told her mother, I don't believe in God. And she was expecting it to be bad because her mother was very religious. And it was like, well, okay, that's all right with me. And she was like, whoa, that went well. And then months later, she was planning her wedding and she was telling her mother about wedding plans. And she said, well, of course, it's going to be an atheist wedding. And her mom said, what do you mean? <laughs> And she said, well, you know, it's an atheist wedding. I mean, you know, it's like, you know, there's not going to be a preacher. There's not going to be prayers. And her mom said, what do you mean? Are you saying you're an atheist? <laughs> and she said, mom, I told you months ago I don't believe in God. And she said, well, I know, but I didn't know that you were an atheist. <laughs> um, um, and, and that kind of story comes up a lot. You know, there's a woman who, like, told her family that she was a naturalist pantheist, and they had no clue what that meant. I didn't even know what that meant. I had to look it up. Um, so if you're going to come out, and, and now there's some people who like using the stronger language, who like atheism, because yes, the word is stigmatized. Using the word is how we're going to push back against the stigma. Using the word is how we're going to push back against the bigotry. Um, other people are like, I would rather just, you know, there's some people, for instance, who say that the fact that humanist isn't as clear, they like that because it starts a conversation. You know, you come out as an atheist and they think they know what it means. You come out as a humanist and say, what does that mean? I don't know what a humanist is. And then you can explain it. It opens the door to a conversation. But if you're going to use that softer language or language that people aren't as familiar with, 
Um, you need to be prepared to be clear. This is what it means. I don't believe in God. I'm non-religious. I'm a humanist. I'm a skeptic. This means that I don't believe in God, and I'm not going to church, and I'm not going to have prayers at my wedding, and you know, it's you know, um, I'll go to Christmas service with you, but I'm not going to pray. You know, whatever it means to you, um, you're going to need to spell it out. Th there is a flip side of that, which sometimes people do come out it, like they have like the four foot the atheist and like a big sign and. People People will still not get it. So sometimes that's, that, that responsibility isn't on you. You know, it's like it's sometimes you can use the clearest language in the world and people will not get it. Um, but again, if you're going to use softer language, uh, be prepared to spell it out. Um, thank you so much. Thank you.